Hello, and welcome to another Shader Sandwich tutorial. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the second Shader Sandwich beginner tutorial. My name is Sean and I'll be taking you through this part as well. Hey. So, today we're going to be adding on to our previous shader that we created last time. And this time, we're going to make it look a little more interesting. We're going to be adding a rim light. So, do you want to know what that looks like? Here you go. Looking pretty snazzy, I gotta say. So you can change the rim light's colour, you can change its width, and of course, as I mentioned last time, you can now also change the specular glossiness. So all in all, it's looking pretty nice. Alright, so let's actually make it. So, open up Shader Sandwich, and load up whatever shader you made last time. The simplified version of the standard specular shader. So I'm just going to open that up, load up my preview window as usual, and dock that on the side. Alright, here we are. Now, your first instinct might be to add a new layer into the albedo. I could understand this, but the thing is we want the rim light to glow. The albedo channel is affected by lighting calculations, so it won't actually glow correctly. So what we need is a new layer channel, one that is created for glows. However, there isn't one here. So what we need to do is enable it. So we're going to go into a new screen now, the Passes screen. So down here, in Passes, just click that. So this screen lets you set tons and tons of different settings for your shader, such as different lighting modes, specular modes, enabling transparency, power seclusion mapping, there's all sorts of stuff here. But in this case, we want to focus on emission, which allows you to make things glow. So we're just going to turn that on by ticking the checkbox there. Now, for those that were wondering last time as well, over here in the specular area is where you can change the glossiness size. So if you want, I'd suggest adding an input for that. So now you can change how shiny it is. So that's pretty cool. Alright, so now let's go back to our layers. So you'll now see in the layers panel that there's a new layer channel, emission, which is where and what colour the glow is. If we add a new colour layer here, you'll see how it gets added on top as a glow, rather than actually being affected by any lighting calculations. So this is how we're going to add our rim light. So, add that new layer to the emission, and change its type to procedural gradient. A gradient is simply a transition from one colour to another across the mapping. So as you can see, if we set colour A to kind of red, and colour B to blue, then you'll see how it blends across the two. So what we're going to do is we're going to map one of these sides to the edges of the object, and one of these to the centre. However, currently it's mapped to what's called the UV map, and this isn't what we want. So if you have a look on the layers panel, down where it says UV map, reflection, direction, generate, view, etc., this is the mapping area. So the mapping of the layer changes where it puts what part of the layer on what part of the model. In this case, we want to map it from the edge to the inside, and so there's actually a very aptly named mapping type called rim light. So if you simply select that, and we have a look on the monkey, you'll see how it's mapping colour B to the outside and colour A to the inside. If we simply make colour A black, then we've created our rim light. Alright, so let's save this out. I'm just going to save this as a new shader called rim light tutorial and I'll set that in the material. Now you'll notice you still can't actually change the colour of it. Same problem as last time. Well, simply add an input for colour B, resave, and there we go. Now we can change the colour of it. The only thing we're missing now is the ability to change the width. Now in Shader Sandwich there are a lot of different ways to do this, but I'll show you through the simplest one. So if you scroll down to the bottom of layers, you'll see an area called effects. So effects are things you can apply to the layer after all this stuff has been worked out, such as blurs, desaturations, hue changes, a lot of mathematical effects, there's plenty of different things, and it really lets you change the layer and customise it a lot. In this case, we're going to add what's called the power effect, which simply raises all those individual colour channels, the red, green, blue, and alpha, to a power. So, add the effect, maths, power. And then add that as an input, because it controls the width. So, if you increase it, you'll see how the width becomes smaller, and if you decrease it, you'll see how it becomes thicker. And there we go! Alright, so, our rim light shader is now finished. And it's looking pretty snazzy, I gotta say. Alright, well, that's the end of part two. Hopefully you learnt a bit this lesson, and yeah. This stuff is still pretty simple, though, so I'd suggest taking a look at the next one, which is where things get really fun. Alright, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, as usual, just leave them in the comments below and I'll try and answer them. Okay, thanks. See you guys later.